The paper I will present is available now on our website and you can use the QR code to access it. It's an external literature review and it was authored by an independent consultant, Dr. Nadal Kiram, who is here with us today, I'm pleased to say, on the panel. So you will hear from her directly then, and I'm just taking the honor of presenting the findings. So why did we commission this paper and indeed host this webinar? Well, as I mentioned, our mission is to support feminist and women's movements in the context of ending violence against women. And critically, we do so by supporting civil society and women's organizations through grant giving. This paper was intended to help us develop a framework for assessing UN women's contributions, civil society and women's rights organizations to support women's movements, to help us measure this through concepts and frameworks. And we very much hope that this paper will also be useful to you and many other partners working in the field of support to feminist movements. The methodology of the paper through the work of Dr. Nadal Karim was to review over 50 documents on social movements and movements in the space of ending violence. And we would like to deeply thank and acknowledge all the organizations, scholars, academics, and activists, which we will be quoting through this paper. The paper is part of a series we're commissioning on how feminist movement support and ending violence against women interact over the course of 2022 to better inform decision-making of funders and grant makers such as ourselves. So firstly, what does this paper and the external literature say about movements? And this is something we want you to critically engage with and have a discussion with us here now in the chat box, but also afterwards. There are many theories around social movements and movement building, and the external literature provides some key conceptualization, conceptualizations, which are online and they're available on the screen now. Social movements are typically forms of collective action that emerge in response to situations of inequality, oppression, or unmet social, political, economic, or cultural demands. The long-term transformation of systems of power can involve shifting not only policies, laws, and institutions, but also social norms and societal narratives. And these social movements have come about over the decades and hundreds of years in many different ways and have different historical roots. In most cases, the external literature found that the movements were built through active and deliberate investment of labor, thought, and resources over time by groups and memberships of people. When it comes to feminist movement building, we're drawing on the prominent feminist activist and writer Jessica Horn in her definition of building feminist movements as a process of mobilizing women and women's organizations for struggles whose goals are specific to gender equality. So taking these key conceptualizations of movement building, we wanted to explore what are the characteristics of movement building which can inform our decision-making and investment. And the author identified several key characteristics to social movements that are typical to these progressive social movements trying to change power dynamics. Movements have a collective vision and framework of the injustice they're trying to make right. They critically have an authentic base of community organizing and key constituents leading the change. In social movements, there is a long-term focus and a long-term horizon. Social movements build power and capacity, capacity over years. And the author recommended that therefore resourcing within movement building really needs to be over the long-term. And it needs to not focus on specific issues, but tackle violence and violence against women overall. Looking then, for us, we looked at the types of organizations then 
that constitute movement building, what types of civil society and women's rights organizations are part of movements. And the literature showed several different frameworks, but this one was very useful to us. Scholar Shalanthi Bathbala for AWID defined movement building organizations in three ways. Some organized civil society organizations are movement building and movement supporting, and they exist independently, independently of or outside of the movements they build or support. They play a critical role in the emergence of a movement. Then there are civil society organizations that are movement created after the social movement starts. And these can be set up by movement constituents as a way of organizing their members around a movement agenda. And finally, there are service providing organizations that may not strictly on face value be seen as movement building, but provide a critical part of the movement by providing services for people in need as part of the movement. And we really recognized ourselves, the UN Trust Fund, in this range of types of organizations that we support. Another framework which we help, we used and we found helpful thanks to Nadal's work was this framework of the focus of movement building organizations based on the Miami Workers Center's four pillars of social justice infrastructure. These are the areas of focus for movement building organizations that can be intertwined complementary. The four pillars include power, that movement building organizations are building a base, building membership and building power on a large scale to influence change. They focus on shifting political paradigms of consciousness and awareness raising on public opinion and consciousness through, for example, through media advocacy work. And as mentioned before, many organizations are focused on delivering services to the people. And last but not least, many organizations within movements are trying to shift and change policies. These pillars map very well onto the focus of ending violence against women for organizations such as the UN Trust Fund, as we focus on prevention, which aligns to consciousness, we focus on changing policies and laws, and we focus on access to services. Underlying all of these areas, the most essential pillar for transformation and long-term change is power. And all the other pillars in this framework support the pillar of power. So what then are feminist movements? The literature we just looked at focused on social movements in general. Nadal helped us look at well, what are the characteristics then of feminist movements? And again, Badbala proposes through her framework that you can see on the screen, that there are many movements that focus on injustice against women, but that they, to be critically feminist, they tend to have the following characteristics, that movements that are feminist adopt a gendered analysis, that women form a critical part of women's leadership, they embody feminist values, women's leadership is built and centered, the movement's political goals are gendered, the movement uses gendered strategies, and the movement uses creates more feminist organizations, this knock-on effect of supporting and building more feminist organizations. And all of these different strands of feminist feminism can also adopt intersectional lenses, and it would be great to discuss that further with you at how this interacts with intersectionalism. Although many progressive feminist movements engage in actions and demands of feminist, it's also important to note that not all movements and organizations can use the feminist label. Owing to risks of political repercussion and backlash, we may find that movements and organizations identify as women's movements or other movements to prevent backlash against the feminist label. So what then of how this interacts with ending violence against women? We've seen that social movements, women's and feminist movements have had a long history 
And in terms of their contribution to ending violence against women, the literature is also becoming clearer that autonomous feminist movements have an enduring effect on violence against women policies at country, national, local to international level. The status and maturity of feminist and women's movements to end violence against women, though differ from country to region, and it is important to understand these differences. Evaluations of ending violence against women programming can help. And we've seen some excellent programming evaluations that have illustrated the efficacy of movement building approaches, for example, community mobilization and consciousness raising in prevention of violence. However, the author of this report also found some components of feminist movement building are missing from the evidence. For example, we see that a lot of the ending violence against women's programs and projects is still short term, under three years. And so it is very hard to match that with the feminist, the social movement literature, which says that you need to take a long term approach, a long term vision. So we still have a lot to learn on the research on social movements and how that interacts with violence against women research programming and policy. The literature linking women's rights organizations and efforts to build or support feminist movements to end violence against women provides some evidence, but it continues to be an important area for learning and explanation. For the UN Trust Fund, this is very critical for us because we want to determine how to best support and fund feminist women's movements and feminist movements that are supporting ending violence against women, and critically how we can support civil society and women's organizations. So the author of the report you will see also helped define characteristics of effective funding and support that we and other donors and grant makers can use and learn from. And you can see these critical elements on the screen. Some of these you will have heard and we hear them repeating against the GBV and feminist movement action coalitions, the global at the Jeff Forum, and we continue to advocate for this in different ways. But it's important to remind ourselves again, critical characteristics include core, flexible, long-term funding, creating deliberate spaces for learning and hearing, putting civil society at the center of learning is critical. Funders should integrate these movement building elements I've just explained into grant making. We should look at the balance of resourcing formal movement building organizations versus informal and how to reach the informal. We should prioritize constituent led organizations and groups. Partner and learn from women's and, women's and activist less funds who have been active in this space for many years. We should look to go beyond grant making to accompany activists and support them through capacity building. We should invest in healing and justice and holistic security ever more important in this era of backlash and resistance against feminist movements. And we should invest in reflective learning and internal learning ourselves, which is what we're doing today. So after all of this research, thank you very much to Nadal. We, she presented a couple of recommendations, learning from the external literature. And the two main recommendations were that funders and grant makers should carefully consider the different theories around social movements and movement building to hone their perspectives and inform decision-making on what and how to fund organizations in the movement building and ending violence against women's space. Funders and grant makers should invest also, number two, in generating and disseminating practice-based evidence on how investment in civil society builds and supports feminist movements. So what are the UN Trust Fund doing in response, as well as this webinar? We already have strong commitments in our new strategic plan to investing in sustainable um, and inclusive feminist movements. We have increased our percentage of core, flexible, long-term funding and grant allocations, and we hope to do more over the years. Our recent launch uh, of our 
25th call of proposals, integrated some of the movement building elements that have been raised here into our grant making. And we focused under, but we operate under movement building and feminist principles, as well as a focus on intersectionality. We have a strong focus on the importance of organizational resilience of civil society. And over the next few years, we want to really invest in learning more about this and to promote the practice-based knowledge of civil society. As a general rule, we do provide competent and capacity development for civil society that we support through project management training and technical assistance. And we've also increased investments in self-care budgets for all our grantees. But we do want to do more, and that's why we're here advocating um, for others to do the same. And we also want to learn. We know that we still could do more, and we want to learn from you to adjust our policies and procedures where we can.